All right, good morning, folks. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we see that folks are dropping in, um, so I'll just reintroduce um, the team that we have here from Advancement Project California, um, and I'll let them introduce themselves so you can know the voices that are in the room. Um, I am Megan McClare, the Director of Health Equity. Hi, everyone. This is John Winino, the Senior Communications Associate. And this is Rob Graham, a GIS programmer with Communications in Healthy City. Um, we're really excited to be able to have your time this morning to talk to you about HealthyCity.org. Um, we've been a longtime partner of uh, the endowment and have um, partnered with various BHCs across the state, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, but HealthyCity.org has been a project that we've partnered with the Learning and Evaluation um, Office on for about four years now. Um, and so we are excited to kind of talk about the newest developments of the um, of the new site and to kind of get some feedback from folks and hopefully this will be a tool that will be useful to your sites. The next slide. Um, so what we'll be covering today is we, yeah, we can do a round of introductions, um, an intro to Healthy City. I think we'll also have an opportunity to hear from Lori Nascimento. Um, some background on the website and then my colleague Rob will kind of do us a run through of the new platform and do a couple demonstrations on how to use this to support um, data informed advocacy. All right, so um, I'm going to turn it over to Lori to uh, kick us off. Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you on this end. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Megan. And uh, this is Lori Nascimento with the California Endowment. And I just wanted to give a little bit of context about our partnership with Healthy City. As Megan mentioned, we've been partners for a long time. Actually, when I started here in 2008, that's when we started talking prior to the launch of the 10-year Building Healthy Communities Plan. And Healthy City was really instrumental in helping us with the site selection and being able to look at existing data, um, not just population level data, but also data around where there are schools and stores and health clinics, et cetera, in, in forming um, the initial kind of outlines of the potential BHC places. And then later on, um, they actually worked with each of the BHC places to refine the geographic boundaries. So they were really instrumental with that, as well as trying to make population level data accessible for people in the BHC sites to use for their own advocacy and purposes. And um, we really you know, started smaller and building, and Healthy City expanded to be statewide, expanded to also include a lot of data <laughs> for each of the BHC sites, so much so that it became almost overwhelming, the amount of data that was available. And now, um, once the 14 sites were selected, Healthy City worked, in addition to the boundaries, also to provide technical assistance and data workshops to encourage sites to be able to use um, data for community-based participatory research. And so now, as mapping tools have become more easily available and so has data, Healthy City has made some important changes to the site that we wanted to share out with everybody today. Those of you who are more familiar with the site or used to it in the past might remember there's just so much to choose from. And I think the team has done a great job in trying to help curate some of the data and make it a little more easy to access and to figure out what you need and, and what you can use. Um, they've also been um, aware of a lot of the, the shifts and changes and focus areas around all of the different areas of work from prevention to schools and neighborhoods. And so, um, we're excited today to be able to learn more about the updates to the Healthy City site, which was really designed to improve um, the user's experience and the ease of getting data um, for the purpose of community advocacy, research, and action. So with that quick overview, um, we're going to pass it back to Megan and Rob and the team so they can just launch into this um, overview. And there is a chat um, box available, so if anybody has any questions, we encourage you to ask questions along the way so um, the team can help address them and make sure that if you have any questions relative to um, something, some sort of data that you're looking for in your site, that they can try to respond to that during this webinar. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Lori. Yeah, so I think we have a question from someone who's having some issue with audio um, that shouldn't be. I don't know, Rob, if you have any recommendations for um, addressing that. Yeah, well, can we just confirm that, that others can hear? 
other than Lori? I can hear. Works on, Works my, on my end. Okay. Oh, that was you. <laughs> cool. Um, Great. Um, I think, S. yeah. All right, so we're going to try to work through that for Nick, um, and I'll keep us moving for now. Um, so really just to briefly talk about an introduction to, oh, to um, Advancement Project. Um, we are a next generation civil rights organization uh, where we champion the struggle for those um, that are impacted by greater um, by economic and racial inequity. Um, and our work in California really is around transforming our public systems, our public institutions um, to ensure that they're making their best efforts to serve low income communities of color. And we do this through rigorous uh, research analysis. Um, so we have an internal centralized research capacity. Um, we also uh, provide support around policy and advocacy development. We have a legislative office based in Sacramento. So we co-sponsor and we move legislation. Um, and then we also really lean into providing capacity building support to um, advocates, coalitions, and leaders in the community um, based on their areas of interest. Uh, we have four cornerstone programs educational equity, equity in public funds, health equity, and political voice. Um, education equity really hones in on the work of early, child care educa early childhood education, um, access to meaningful resources and investments. Equity in public funds um, works to break open the black box of our budgets and so that advocates know how the budget cycle works, where there might be some uh, budget inefficiencies and opportunities um, to support or move resources to support their efforts. Um, and Political Voice is our newest program um, where it really hones in on public participation beyond just voting. It's around um, getting people engaged in voting processes such as you know, petitioning and rallies and public speaking. Um, and most recently, we actually are providing statewide leadership around census. Um, just given that there's a kind of a federal cuts that are coming to census and representation, uh, but also an understanding that those numbers are really important to uh, the districting process. And finally, there is a health equity program with which I lead, uh, where we kind of work on access to health care across the state. Um, so really, our focus is on understanding kind of what are the local implications particularly given the current federal context that we're existing and how can we continue to ensure that we, we can, can protect the gains at the county level um, and that includes a focus on safety net provider programs and healthcare um, community health centers and then we work on advancing community investments around transportation parks and we're currently um, exploring opportunities to support anti-displacement movies movements um, primarily in LA County um, the health equity program, what is where the Healthy City program uh, started, the Healthy City website started, um, and we've recently pivoted into kind of doing more policy and advocacy work over the last couple of years. And our partnership with TCE, um, you know, I think expands beyond what, you know, Lori has spoken about, but all of our, our programs have some type of connection um, with some, several BHCs. Our equity and public funds program is currently wrapping up, I think, a second year of funding around local control funding formula and providing support to Coachella, Merced, Fresno, Del Norte, and Kern around how to really kind of understand where the budget implications are um, and really kind of understand how we can advocate for areas of restorative justice, dual language learning, and increased parent engagement. Um, we also, um, the Health Equity Program is also kind of partnered with the South LA BHC around uh, support in Prop 47, as well as support around kind of their A29 event, the commemorative event of, on, of the LA riots. Um, and then just most recently, um, we've received robust funding from uh, the endowment to support our Race Counts effort, which is a racial equity project that will be ranking and measuring racial equity across all of the counties in California. Um, in seven domains of healthcare, education, built environment, uh, economic opportunity, democracy, and housing. And um, this is actually something that we'll be coming back to program officers in the fall to really chat more about. Um, so I just really wanted to kind of let you all know about Advancement Project. If you are not familiar with us as an organization, we um, regularly provide TA to several sites um, and hope that this is just one opportunity that we can support the work that's happening in your areas. So without further ado, I will turn it over to my colleague, Rob Graham, who will speak specifically about the HealthyCity.org site. 
Cool. Thanks, thanks, Megan, and thanks, Lori, for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go through a few slides um, to kind of give a little bit of background on Healthy City to Site and um, kind of what we've been doing with this project, um, and then go into a couple of demos that, that we can go through together. Um, so yeah, so healthycity.org, I guess, has been said, um, it's our flagship mapping and data website. Um, it's really, uh, you know, I think grounded in this idea that people's ability to make healthy choices um, or that everyone should have the ability to make healthy choices. Um, and so we really want to transform uh, how decisions are made, how policies are made, um, and empower communities um, to be able to, to do things like be able to eat fresh fruits and vegetables or be active or you know, seek preventative care. Um, so just a little bit of kind of background. So we started the site in 2003. It was definitely like very innovative. Um, you know, for its time, and you know, GIS technology really has been rapidly evolving since the early 2000s, and Healthy City was really on the forefront um, of doing that, especially in like on the web. Um, and at that point, you know, one of the real motivations was that data was so off limits to um, decision makers, and uh, especially like communities and people in the community. So it was really a way to free the data and get it get it out to uh, get it out to the people. Um, and then, so again, connect people to services, but also connect them to um, or injecting data into policy making. Uh, and then, just technology wise, you know, I think it's a really strong platform, powerful platform, and it's built on, on this open source GIS um, like mapping uh, web development stack. Uh, and then, yeah, like we're on version six right now. Um, you know, we've been kind of evolving the site as we've gone and really trying to adapt it to the current needs of the time. Um, and so if you think about, you know, 15, 16 years later um, from when we started, it's, a, uh, it's definitely a very different world than it was before. Um, and, you know, definitely in terms of technology, like web technology has definitely taken off that time during that time. Um, and then also uh, data has become a lot more available. So there's a lot of open data portals from uh, you know, from like cities and counties and other like administrative sources that are really taking a lot of efforts to make their data open. Um, and then especially uh, 211, which has been one of our real partners, um, they have taken some initiative to really make their data available um, directly. Um, and so we did a lot of uh, interviews um, with stakeholders and with users to kind of decide the direction that we wanted to go. Um, and these are, these are kind of what it came down to that we would focus on, which was um, having a curated set of equity data uh, so that you could um, you know, find what you need to, to make like an advocacy case, um, but then also uh, to, have, to be able to upload your own data and work with your own data um, and work with others on that data. And so we really tried to focus on that, so really just, I guess, framing the issues and working with your own data. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, I'll keep going. So, um, the new version. So, I don't know how many people on the call have, have had a lot of experience with Healthy City. Um, uh, this new version, I think it's like, uh, it's really thoughtful, and we've definitely put a lot of uh, thought and, and effort into making it um, a user friendly interface, making it you know, kind of fun to use um, and also easy to use. Um, and really, and so you can see some screenshots. We wanted to have it mobile optimized. You can see some of the like kind of menu systems. And we'll get into this um, when we're doing the live demo. Uh, but I do want to just go over really the platform components that we're looking at. So kind of the core of the site is the mapping interface. Um, and so it's your ability to um, map our data that we have on the site and to load your own data onto the maps. Um, and then also to be able to save and print those maps um, and to be able to kind of manage your account and the things that you have. We do have a quick facts page for um, you know, all the cities and counties and even zip codes in the state um, that you can get kind of like basic information um, on you know some demographics, uh, some transportation equity issues we see, and then we have um, API services, uh, which um, just kind of to allude to 
what Megan was talking about with race counts, um, we have, this is really a platform that can feed other custom projects. Um, and so, so yeah, we'll have another slide on that at the end. Um, and then group portals, which is a way to be able to, you know, share your data out and collaborate. Um, so with that, we'll go to the site. I don't know if we, do we have any questions that we need to, okay, cool. All right, so, welcome to Healthy City. <laughs> and uh, so we're just gonna do a quick overview. I just wanna show some of the features that we can do here. Um, and one of the one of the very cool features I'm gonna to go to make a map is, is this like ability that you can upload your own data. So um, what I thought we would do, I actually got all the zip codes for the organizations that were invited to this webinar. Um, so we can actually make a map of, of us and then we can see where we are. Um, and so we go to, go to our map um, and then you can basically click in here to edit and give it a name. So we could call this our DHC webinar participant. Cool. And then this is going to be um, statewide, but if we wanted to focus in on an area and we can um, do this in a while, we have um, you know, all these different geographies, um, counties, regions. Um, so if you wanted to go you know, just to the Inland Empire, for example, um, you could focus your map there. But for this one, um, to start with, we'll start with statewide. Um, and then we're going to add our own data. Um, and here we have uh, it's kind of two tabs, right, for our data and your data. Our data is um, a subset of the two on one data that we've always had. Um, you can see these are like broken out by categories. We have farmers markets, we have, um, you know, pollution control. Um, just you know, there's, there's quite a bit of data layers here that you're welcome to search through. You can also, if you start typing, um, you know, you start to get, you start to get a lot of choices. And so you can, it's quite a bit of data to go through. Um, so here we're going to add our own data. You have, um, you can draw on the map actually, and we might get to this, uh, but you can draw points, lines, and areas directly on the map and save your data that way. Um, or you can load your file from the computer. And so here we have our copy of uh, Healthy City 822 webinar participants. Let's just call it that. And then I'll actually um, show this. Um, so essentially, this is just a flat. Um, spreadsheet, uh, it has names, emails, status, um, and then I just added um, address and zip code. And then, so we're just gonna map these by zip code and then we can kind of see the general spread of where everyone is. So here, um, so you choose an address field. So we could use the address um, or we can just use the zip code as an address field, which also works. Um, and then we'll give it, a, we'll choose the name, which is maybe, um, yeah, I guess the person's name. And then you can actually choose from if you want to include all the fields that were part of your spreadsheet or not. Cool. And uh, so you, to be able to upload your data, you do need to be logged into your account. So I definitely encourage people to create an account um, to be able to, you know, really take advantage of the site. Let me see. All right, and so now we should be able to save this. And so it goes through the spreadsheet, and it's, you know, placing the points on the map. And then we have our Healthy City webinar attendees as one of our layers that we can choose from now. Um, and if we add that to the list and then add these places, um, then we get kind of like, here's the spread. So we're actually pretty statewide, which is, which is really cool. Um, 
And so here, so each of these points, once you've added them to the map, they're clickable. So you can see, um, and hopefully people don't mind too much if their names are showing up here. We won't like make this <laughs> public or anything. Um, but you can just see like kind of like, oh, in Humboldt, there's, we have a partner. Um, obviously we have a TCE down here, um, which has uh, several people on. Um, you can also list out your points with this arrow, so list features, um, and then you can see, you know, each each point that you've uploaded, and then you can kind of go directly to it. Um, cool. So some other some other things you can do with the layer, like once once it's here, um, so we can change the colors. So if you use the uh, the like layer settings button, we have, you know, we can make it yellow or green or blue. Um, you can also change transparency, which comes into effect when you're adding like multiple layers together. So you can turn it down, um, tone it back up. Um, and then you also have a layer property. So here's where you can change the name, like what year it's from. Uh, you can add tags. So like you could call this like demo data and then notes it'll populate this automatically but you can actually um, yeah add any notes that you want to the layer to, for kind of your own reference um, and I'll that. Um, and then I think that's worth noting that then you can always get more information by clicking the I buttons and these kind of show up all over the all over the site so here and then um, like in this case you can then zoom to the layer uh, if we were to go um, open this back up, you can see like we have the I button on each of these. You can see, okay, this is from 211 California. Um, you know, so then, like our reference data is from, um, well, that's actually for me. Um, it's from like your cartographic boundary files, et cetera. So you can, that's a basic place where you can get information on where the data is from. I'm going to pause for just a second. And we just got um, Lori's question, John. Um, and I think I saw that come up. I think at this point, we've unfor we're unfortunately like at our max of participants. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so unfortunately, we're definitely recording this, um, and we'll make it available to people. Um, and we'll email it out to all people who received an invite. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Um, so apologies for that. We just um, realized that we had this limit. But. And we just got a question that says, uh, when uploading data from my account, does this data become available to all account holders, or is it just saved for my organization's use? Um, so it is saved just to your account. Um, you can actually, uh, with a like specific link, um, anyone would be able to look at that data. Um, so you know each layer would get an ID. Um, and let me actually—that's a good good point. Let me actually show that. So I'm going to go to my account section. And so, so basically, it's not it's not findable by other people, but it is um, it is accessible. Um, so, for example, in my account, so we can save maps. Um, if we go to our like uploaded data section, um, there's thematic data, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, here, this data set that we just added, um, which was Healthy City, one of my participants. Um, you can actually you would be able to share this really with anyone and then they'd be able to see that layer. Um, and so if you want to like upload a data set and then share it with someone so they can see it, you can do that. Uh, but at this, at the same time, it's not, um, it's not something that other people can search for, if that makes sense. But if it is like really private confidential data, um, then I would say, let's just talk to us about it further before we put it on the site. Um, while we're here, I will just show, you know, we also have um, from your account section, so you can also get, you know, the information on on that data. So you can see like our source notes and source information, 
I'm the Rob, Rob G. Maps user. Um, you can download, like re-download your data, in which this is really helpful. If you upload addresses, you can actually download the XY coordinates. Um, so if we download um, here what we just uploaded and then open it, you can see like our new our new data actually has like X, Y with it. So if you ever want to just, you know, geocode something and kind of check your geocoding, um, you can do that. And then you can see actually also which ones didn't geocode. So for example, we didn't have zip code information for some of these. So. Uh, and then you can also, you know, kind of edit the layer the same, um, the same interface from the map as from the maps page. Cool. Uh, great. So then I do just want to show that we can then we can save this map. Um, and so the title we can change it here. Whatever we put into like the title box will then also um, be reflected here. Uh, and we can you know, give it a description. And if we save, and so now we actually have a like permanent link to this um, map that then we can then share with anyone. Um, and uh, in terms of sharing, so then you can also, so this map can now be shared on Twitter. You can actually, you know, post a link to the map, um, which will actually also take a screenshot and like send that as the image um, through Twitter. You can do the same thing through Facebook. Um, we can take a screenshot either as a, a JPEG, which I'll go ahead and do. Um, and so you can see, like, you know, if we just want like a print version of like where are our webinar attendees, we can see that on here. Um, the PDF version is uh, just has a little bit more information. Um, like in terms of the header and like the link to the map and when it was printed. And then, like I said, you can also take this URL and then you can always um, use this URL to go directly to the map that you saved. So, which we just did. Um, great. So I'm going to, um, make it a little bit more interesting. So we'll add um, some other places of interest. Um, so one thing that, uh, you know, we might be interested in is like open space around these places. And then another one I thought of um, is maybe a farmer's market location. So we can actually, um, I'll search for farmer's markets. And then we can select that and we can add it to our list of layers. Um, and then I'll also search for parks. Um, so we'll do open access parks um, and also add that to the layers. And then at this point, um, so now you can see we've got, we've got statewide parks, which is actually a pretty huge data set. So um, it's a, uh, um, yeah, I think, great technology-wise that we're able to show this much data on the map um, and you know, do it this fast. Um, so we have the parks, we have our farmer's markets in yellow, and then the attendees in blue. Um, and so we can style it a little bit to make it you know, start to look better. Um, so maybe we turn the parks green and then like turn them down a little bit. Um, and then we can use the orange for the farmer's markets. Um, and then you can actually change the order of these. So we probably want the parks, um, let's see, the parks are on the bottom. But we can move the, so we can move the parks to the bottom um, or you can move them to the top. And you can see like how they start to cover up the points. Um, and I guess not many of these addresses are on parks. <laughs> uh, but you can, you can see how you can, you can move these um, up and down. And then these these points are also clickable. So we have like the downturn venture a farmers market um, for the two one one data, uh, and from kind of like our curated data, you'll get a lot of um, additional information uh, 
depending on what's available in the data. But you know, in this case, you get like markets, offer, fresh, um, groups, yada, yada, yada. Um, and so you always have that like more info button that you can click. And then the same thing, um, even with these features, um, this is a data set from uh, from Green Info Network, and these are their their kind of like core fields. So if you're working with that data, it's helpful to know potentially what these fields are. And then again, with the same um, the same thing, you know, you can click through these and you know go to go to different ones. Um, and it will zoom to them automatically. The same thing with the parks. Um, there's a huge data set, so that's going to take a while to load. And I think this is a good opportunity, actually, then that we can show um, show just LA County. So we'll go. Okay, so here, and then what it'll do is like if you select a region, so if you change area and then select a region like I just did, um, then you can clip it to your area of interest. So you can say, I'm interested in LA County, so um, I want to see, you know, our webinar attendees to the top, our farmers markets and open access parks that are within LA County. Cool. And so that's kind of the overview of. Um, of, I guess, the uh, the places of interest section. Um, I will show that we can now like save this map again. Um, and we could actually save it as a copy. Um, and we can call it, we can give it another title. And now if we go to our account um, and I'll reload our account here, um, you'll see, so in our map section, so now we have like the original map that we made and then we also made a, a copy. So then at any point we can go, you know, load one of these maps. Also from any page when you're, when you're doing this, from any page you also have uh, this option um, to load maps. Again, I think I'll refresh this page. And then here you can, you know, if we go down to, uh, yeah, if we wanted to look at, let's say our original map, just to confirm that it still looks the same, we can go back to it. Um, and then we can kind of like save a, uh, a trail of what we're doing depending on if we want to have like save spots. Cool. How would we uh, see population data on top of one of these maps? Cool. Yeah, good question. Um, and that definitely um, yeah, leads into our thematic data. So thematic data is um, so, you know, point data or places of interest is places of interest is really capturing points and geographies. Um, our thematic data is capturing like things that are attached to zip codes um, or census tracts or counties. Um, and we, similarly to the point data, we have like a curated set um, that you can go through and you can see by race, um, you can see broken out in a lot of different ways. Um, and then we also have the ability to load your own. Um, and so, you know, population, for example, or if we wanted to see population of, you know, a particular race, so we wanted to see just black or African Americans um, percentages, we can add that and then that becomes, um, that becomes our layer, our theme kind of underneath these other points. So then you can start to see, uh, you know, where are farmers markets located in terms of where do um, higher percentages, percentages of black or African Americans live. And then you can also see, you know, in terms of like where some of our organizations are located. Um, And then as you add things, so it tracks it here. Um, so we're looking at census tracts in LA County and I'm actually going to uh, turn off the parks so we can see it a little better and maybe turn off the farmers markets too. Um, and then we can actually take off our, 
our layer and then look at it or take off our boundary layer and look at this statewide. Um, and what's really cool about this is there's this, we have a feature called, um, we call it like adaptive zooming. Uh, so if you're looking at a statewide view, um, you would see, you, know, you see the county level. So you can see like San Bernardino County, 8.2%, Kern County, 5.3%. Um, as you zoom in, the geographies will start to break apart. Um, and so then you can see, you know, in the census tract. So it'll break apart depending kind of like what your zoom level is. Um, and then trying to show the best data for that. Um, if you do want to fix fix the zoom that you're looking at, you can um, go into the settings for the themes. Uh, and so you can choose like, if you want the auto geography, if you want to look at just zip codes. So if you're interested in zip codes, um, for pretty much all of our layers, we have that information as well. Um, and, you know, yeah, zip codes, cities, census tracts, and counties, kind of the core um, census level geographies. And then, so in addition to the theme, another thing that you can do is then start to um, target places. So you can start to see, um, let me go back to, to a county view. Um, so we have um, filters, which is the exact same interface as using the theme data, but you can actually choose filters um, to kind of make things drop out of the map. Um, so if we wanted to see the percentage of Black or African Americans, and then we want to see insurance rates. Um, and so we want to see also percent uninsured. Um, and then we actually can choose that by race as well. Some of our data is broken out by gender also. Um, and you can see the, uh, the kind of like italicized grayed out version is like we don't have this data available by gender. And then if you go down, you'll see like other races that are available for some data sets and not others. Um, but if we add this filter, um, so percent uninsured throughout the state anywhere from zero to 96. So that's kind of crazy. Um, but let's say we want to look at just the places that have at least um, at least like a 10% uninsurance rate um, for Black or African Americans. And so you can see that this started to drop out some of the other counties. Um, so now the ones that are showing are just, just ones that kind of meet this criteria, which is then listed here. Um, and we can actually, if we go back to an area, so I'm going to go back to, um, maybe I'll go to Contra Costa County to try something. Uh, and then you can, you can see, yeah, again, um, if you only want to see places where there's less than 20% uninsured, then you can kind of see the, the racial makeup of that place, or you can go the other way um, and see places that are you know, have at least a 20% uninsurance rate for Blacks or African Americans. So like, I think this would be, if you wanted to do work to try to, you know, enroll people and and get coverage for people, this would be, the census chat might be a good place to start. Um, you can add multiple filters um, and use them together. Uh, so we could also add, um, for example, age and, um, so maybe the percentage of people under or 10 to 14 years. And then so again, you can do the same thing to, and let me just zoom this out a little bit. And if your, if your kind of list of things starts getting in the way, you can always close it. Um, but you know, if we wanted to see, okay, the only places that had at least you know, a decent percentage um, of 10 to 14 year olds. And look at it that way. Um, so let's, uh, we can actually save this map. So I'm going to rename it. Um, Insurance. 
that spelled right. I'm not sure. <laughs> right. So again, now if I go into into my account, we'll have uninsured rates as one of as one of the maps that we've loaded. Um, and then we can also now we can actually print this as well. Um, so the same same kind of deal as before. You can share it in all these different ways. Um, but then, you know, if you really, you can make a complex map and then you can still kind of get um, all that information. So you can see it's like Contra Costa County um, and just kind of like a, a rundown of what you're showing, what's on the map, um, actually even what's on and what's not on. Um, so hopefully that's, that's useful. I think one of the pieces of feedback that we got a lot of times is that it's really nice to have something to take away from the site. Um, and especially if you're doing advocacy, like it's always, um, it's just great to be able to like print something out and take it to your representative and say like, hey, look, like my area is underserved um, and have the evidence kind of like in paper or, you know, that you can send an email kind of right there. Cool. And I guess time check. So we have, um, not quite 15 more minutes. Um, so I think one other feature, I would like to show how you can upload thematic data as well. Um, or actually two other types of data that you can upload. And I'm just going to go through these pretty quick. Um, and I'll actually start a, uh, I'm going to start a new map for this. I'm going to go through these pretty quick and I'm going to give, um, you know, just kind of a, uh, a bit about another feature of the site, which is group pages, um, and then just kind of show another, um, show the other pages briefly. Um, so I do want to point out that you can upload shape files as well. So if you're a GIS person, or you're you know you go on to, for example, the LA County GIS data portable data portal has a lot of data that's there um, available in shape files. So in addition to kind of a spreadsheet that you can use. Um, with addresses, you can also upload a shapefile. Um, so we actually have a shapefile of the BHC communities, um, which we call, so yeah, of the 14 places. And then here, you can generally let a GeoID field auto-generate, but some data, um, particularly like census data, you might want to choose like the FIPS code or something. Um, and then the name field, and if we save that, uh, we can add that to our list. And then we have our 14 places, um, which you can actually then, you know, see, like zoom through each one. And since we've uploaded, since we uploaded our other data before, it's also still available here. Um, so if we wanted to search for like the webinar participants or attendees, um, we can then add that also. Um, and so now we kind of can look at the two of these a little bit together. And so you can see like which which VHCs, I know it's a little tough because they're different sizes, but you know, which are kind of more representative and which less. Um, and uh, I will also say that I'm sure my list of um, Address is not exhaustive, <laughs> but um, yeah. So just you know, it's a really simple process to be able to upload shape data. Um, really, like you can go to um, you know if you're familiar with like the LA County needs assessment for parks that they did, you can download that data and upload it directly on the Healthy City. Um, pretty much anything that you find kind of on a government website that's in a shape file um, form, you can upload on the Healthy City, and then you can look at it with our data and with other um, with our data and then with other data that you've uploaded um, and then also the thematic data you can you can upload as well 
Um, and so for this, I'm actually going to uh, upload our same attendees. Um, this is a little bit untested, so. But I just wanted to show that instead of, if we wanted to, instead of um, geocoding into a zip code, if we wanted to actually attach it to zip codes, uh, what we can we can go to reference geographies, um, and then we can actually choose zip codes, and we can have um, the geo ID of um, the zip code match from the file. And while Rob is doing this, we do have about 10 minutes left, and we encourage you all to uh, submit any questions that you have at this time. And of course, after this webinar, we'll be sending this out. Uh, and you can, of course, reach out to us at any time if you have any questions for support. So in this case, well, that was really more to show the process, so that wasn't really <laughs> something tested. Um, but definitely, you know, I think it's something to play with um, that you can add layers here and you can, you know, choose, you can kind of match your layers on with the geographies and look at those. Um, and then to John's point, I do just want to kind of like point out um, some resources and kind of what else is on the site. So we've really focused on on the maps here. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, a quick overview. I do want to just touch on group pages. Um, group pages are a way that you can collaborate and share your data. And, you know, if you'd like more information on that, definitely, like, reach out to me. Um, you know, one that we've worked on um, is in Santa Cruz County with the Santa Cruz Community Data Mapping Project. Um, and so if we open that, essentially uh, within here, um, you have kind of like these options for creating your group where you can give it a name, you can give it a URL that you can always go to, and that's what I just opened to look at that. Um, you can add members to it, a photo, um, and then you can kind of go through and you know, either add or take away different data layers or different maps that you've saved or geographies and they'll show up here. Um, and so just like a quick run through of that. Um, so, you know, you can see like they added a picture um, and a little like description of what they do. And then you get some built-in mapping capabilities here. Um, and most of their data is focused in Santa Cruz. Excuse me. Um, you get some different, and let me see if I can make the screen. For example, if you if you wanted to highlight, you know, median age by zip code, you could add that data as to your zip to your um, group page. And then the same idea if you're looking at maybe like gentrification. So when have people moved in and out like by zip code? Um, and then you get kind of the same types of um, kind of map interactions here. Um, if you add maps, they'll actually show up like with the screenshot, so it gives you a good opportunity to kind of have a collection of maps that you could show. Um, and then, you know, data that you've uploaded that you want to highlight, that you, you know, want to be able to share, you know, here's my Santa Cruz group page link with all the data that I think is important. You know, I think the idea for this is for you to kind of be able to customize a portal to um, things that are important for your issues. Um, and then you can actually also add resources, um, which are can either be links or it can be PDFs or downloads. And so there's that to show. And then, um, yeah, and then, you know, we do have some resources. We're definitely, like, working on building out the help documents. Um, so that's something that, you know, you can expect more of coming soon. Um, we do have one up there right now for the group portal administration, but, um, you know, we're actually we'll add this video, and then we're also you know adding up a couple adding a couple more um, case studies of kind of how you can use 
this technology generally. Um, you know, uh, most of these are from previous versions of the site at this point, but as we're kind of building out um, and using, you know, this site that we that we just launched tomorrow, we'll be adding here as well. Um, and then, you know, this is just kind of like a space for our community research to toolbox, which I don't know um, if, if folks have like um, experience with, but it's basically a set of documents um, about how to do community research that um, that Advancement Project and Healthy City have kind of come up with over the years. Um, so just some resources to help for help. Um, and then, you know, kind of like about the data, about us. Um, and then you can always contact us. So you can send me emails, um, which I'll have my email up in a second. Um, or you can always, you can fill out our contact us form and send us something and it comes straight to us. Um, so with that, I might go back to, so our next steps. Does anybody have, were there any questions? Any questions? Okay. You know, just um, about next steps, uh, you know, and I, I think I think I might have skipped actually talking about specific timing of the project. Um, you know, we launched this beta version in February this year, so we've been in kind of like a beta um, a beta period for the last uh, several months. Um, and we just recently retired um, our old version of Healthy City. Um, and during that period, um, a number of emails went out to users um, encouraging you to, to migrate your data over, which is something that happened automatically if you created an account um, during that period. At this point, we don't have it happening automatically, but if you do have data that you know of or that you you think you have on the old Healthy City site, definitely reach out to us because we still have um, the database and we can still you know pull pull that for you as needed. Um, and then you know going forward, now that we've you know we've kind of consolidated on one site, one direction, um, you know we really want to to get it um, to use it kind of like throughout. Um, our program areas and then you know with you all and then out in the community um, and then also like kind of strengthen our I guess you know self-serve user resources to really um, you know we provide support for people to use it um, we can provide like limited um, trainings and that sort of thing um, like case by case um, but we, we really want to have like some good documentation there um, for people to really make the most of the tool um, and then you know to continue are you know kind of like expanding slash I would say curating our database, um, and so you know as issues change, as priorities change for um, our partners, um, kind of updating the data that that we have on there as our curated data, with the idea that you can always add your own data as well. Um, and then we're also uh, leveraging this technology, and I think I hinted at this before, but leveraging this technology into new tools <clears throat> or other websites. Um, and so the example of that is uh, racecounts.org, which is um, launching in about a month. Uh, but basically, you know, we, we have data stored on Healthy City, um, custom data that we uploaded. Um, and it becomes a platform where we can, we can serve, serve the data in a way that we can create, you know, custom types of maps with different um, visualizations, uh, as well as like charts and graphs and kind of anything that you can do with, with a good data source and kind of making that a, a web service versus just a downloadable file. Um, and so, yeah, so the idea, so, you know, Healthy City is really gonna power our racecounts.org website. Um, and, you know, as we have other initiatives or other, you know, things that we work on with partners, um, it's, a, it's a model that we can continue to use. Um, yeah, and I, so I think that um, that covers the demo. Um, definitely, uh, you know, reach out or you can ask any questions right now. I think we might have a couple minutes um, or definitely uh, reach out. And so I just saw the question from Lori. Um, so how is Race Counts connected to Healthy City? Um, and so the answer is the Healthy City technology that we built to um, 
during this kind of like redesign and rebuild of the site, um, that technology is the same technology that powers the, the maps and all the charts that will be on racecounts.org. Um, and when you see race, racecounts.org, you know, I, I think as Megan said, um, there's seven issue areas. There's, you know, up to 10 in, indicators for issue areas. So we have like 70 um, and data points per county um, at the state level and then for some cities also. Um, and so there's really like a lot of opportunities to dig into that data and and um, and visualize it in different ways. Uh, and so you know, Healthy City is really this flexible kind of like data handling and data service um, platform that we can then build custom tools like this on top of. That's a good, great question. Are there any other questions from the group? Uh, you can go ahead and use a chat feature to submit any. All right. Okay, with that, we want to thank you all again for joining us today. Uh, as Rob and Megan had mentioned, Healthy City is really meant to be a tool to help you all in, in your advocacy work on the ground. And we want to make sure that this is as useful as possible. So please feel free to reach out to Rob or use the contact us feature on the website to submit any questions. Uh, we are constantly reiterating to make sure that we're making this uh, a tool that is useful and has the data that can equip you all with the needs to push your campaigns forward. So please uh, let us know what you need, and we'll be in touch soon with the recording of this webinar. Thank you again for joining us today, uh, and have a wonderful week. Well, thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time.